Hello everyone, I am Chirag Thakkar, Commissioning Editor at Roli Books and this is Roli Pulse brought to you by Roli Books. If you haven't already, please go subscribe to Roli Books on YouTube, press the bell icon to get notifications about everything we put out and also follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Today's conversation is between Roli Books' author Major General Ian Cardozo and Rohit Agarwal on the wildly popular graphic series Parambir Chakra. General Cardozo joined the services wing, which later became the National Defense Academy in the 1950s. He was commissioned at the Indian Military Academy into the 1st Battalion and 5th Gorkha Rifles in 1958 and was the first officer of the army to be awarded the Sena Medal for Gallantry on a patrol in NEFA in 1959. Wounded in the Battle of Bangladesh in 1971, he overcame the handicap of losing a leg and became the first war disabled officer to be approved for command for an infantry battalion. He retired in 1993 from his appointment as Chief of Staff of a Corps in the East. He is the author of many books, including The Sinking of INS Kukri, Survivor Stories, and Paramveer, and Our Heroes in the Battle, The Indian Army, World War I. Roli Books has published General Cardozo's graphic books on Paramveer awardees, uh, illustrated by Rishi Kumar. These 32 page series are wildly popular with young children as well as adults. General Cardozo will be in conversation with Rohit Agarwal who is an alumnus of National Defense Academy and the Defense Services Staff College and has worked in four significant domains of Indian Army, strategy, operations, human resource management and training and development. He has been a certified professional trainer in premier institutions such as the School of Tactical Warfare, Army War College of Strategy, College of Military Communications and Technology, College of Materials Management, among others. An avid reader and uh, a writer, he writes regularly for several professional journals and has several books to his credit, such as Delhi Darbar 1911, Brave Men of War, Tales of Valor 1965 and others. So welcome to Roli Pulse, both of you. Please enjoy this conversation. Rohit, over to you. Uh, good evening to you, sir. And uh, let me start I... by saying uh, what an honor it is for me to be in conversation uh, with you this uh, evening. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that, uh, you know, our readers or our viewers also realize that it's very rarely that you find one legend writing about other legends. So this is what uh, we see in you, sir, uh, your own legendary story and then you telling the legendary stories of other brave hearts who have uh, won the various gallantry awards. So let me uh, start by asking you about the, the Parambir Chakra book itself, sir. Thank you, Rohit. Firstly, thank you for your introduction. Yeah. Sir, yeah. sir. Uh, sir, what, what, what is it that motivated you to write the book on Parambir Chakras and then followed up by a graphic series? Uh... Actually, Rohit, uh, as you would know, that we in the army, when we were in uniform, uh, Writing was frowned upon. If you wrote, you were considered to be a paper tiger. And if you wrote about stuff which was not military, then you were a weirdo. So uh, writing took a back seat till I retired. When I retired, a Pramod Kapoor, the publisher and owner of Roli Books, approached Satish Nambia, who was the director of USI, to ask somebody to write a book on Parambir. And he pointed in my direction and the book dropped into my lap. I wanted to write about heroes and this was an excellent opportunity. So that's how I came to write about Parambir. Sir, and uh, so what is the chief focus that you have kept in these stories? What, 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 are the, what is the central idea behind it or what is the theme running? across these stories? The central idea, Rohit, is uh, the essence of courage. What people need to know is that when they ask what motivates a soldier to go beyond the extreme to the extent of putting his line, his life in the line of fire. And I came to the conclusion that the word is love. 
love may not be a very military word but it is on the altar of love that men and women in uniform put their lives in the line of fire and disappear in the smoke and fire of battle so when people ask what is it that makes these men do extraordinary things are they ordinary mortals doing extraordinary things or the extraordinary people doing extraordinary things and after i wrote the book i came to the conclusion that these are ordinary men and women who go beyond the task and to the extent of putting their lives at risk and therefore it is love which embodies courage honor self sacrifice commitment dedication all these things can be summoned under one word love so that's what i think is the focus of my writing this book right sir and uh, can you uh, can you tell us a little bit about the award itself so the paramveer chakra because it's a post independence award when was it instituted and how was it retrospectively made uh, applicable sir yeah the award was made in 1950 what happened actually is during the indo pak war 47 48 the government wanted to honor people who had done well in battle and at that time they were still part of the commonwealth and so the government approached the british government to say that we'd like to award the vc to these four personnel the british thought about it and said how can we give a british award to two countries of the commonwealth who are fighting each other and therefore they said you please make your own awards so that took a little time and it was only instituted in the month of 1950 january 1950 and these awards were given with retrospective effect so uh, if we may just have a uh, recollection sir how many uh, brave hearts have won this award so far since 1950 and also how many of them are still alive i i i assume most of them are post posthumous because of the degree of action involved but how many of them are still alive sir? yeah out of the 21 14 were posthumous and seven were alive at one point of time today there are only three who are alive and one is bana singh one is yogendra yadav and one is kumar and uh, can you tell us a little bit about the medal and its design itself sir the, and the ribbon maybe yes very strangely the medal was designed by a girl who was a citizen of switzerland while she was holidaying in switzerland on the alps she met a young indian officer who was at sanders who had come for a holiday captain kanolkar of the sikh regiment and they fell in love and they wanted to marry it took a while it took two years for both the families to agree but she was fascinated by all things indian she became a hindu she learned marathi she learned hindi she learned sanskrit she learned to paint she learned to do bharatanatyam the arts dance everything and she was more indian than any of us and she also was an artist and a painter so when it came to designing the chakra series uh, the adjutant general major general atal decided to ask her to do it and she did a brilliant job of it and uh, that's how the award was designed how has been the response of the public uh, to the books especially the graphic uh, the graphic series which i assume that a lot of young people have uh, would be interested so what has been the response like sir see as far as the book is concerned the book is done pretty <coughs> well it is now going into its 13th reprint uh in fact uh, i was asked to do this in the year 2000 at that time i wasn't very uh, computer savvy so i wrote it by hand i revised it five times by hand and uh, and i'm quite when i look at it myself i'm quite surprised and i ask myself did i really write this but i suppose it was uh, what they teach us in the academy what you lack in talent 
you can achieve by hard work. So I worked really hard on the book. And I think it has come out well. And it's been well received. And then uh, army officers' wives uh, wrote to me and said, uh, General, why don't you rewrite the book for children? Now, rewriting a book is not a very happy task. So I decided to do it in the form of illustrated stories, which are people now called comics. They're not funny, they're not comics, but they're illustrated stories of 32 pages. And within these pages, I've got to combine the story of the individual, the story of the battle, the story of the award, and the history behind it. So it's, it's a com combination of what happened on the battlefield and the historical background because uh, it has to be linked with true facts. And so uh, these have become immensely popular. And next year is going to be the 50th anniversary of the 71 war. So we are thinking of uh, having a package of all these four. And I'm also thinking of putting an illustrated story of uh, Sam Manikshaw, who, as you know, was the architect of our victory in 1971. Now, uh, since you are intimately aware of each of these Paramveer Chakra awardee stories, sir, would you like to highlight uh, some of these which, you know, uh, which stand out in your view or which, you know, you find to be the most extraordinary? I'm sure each one of them is extraordinary in its own way, but something that stands out to you if you would like to highlight, sir. Yeah, as you rightly said, each story is a story by itself and one cannot really uh, compare one with the other because the circumstances were quite different, the times, the eras were different, the wars were different, the climatic conditions were different, the terrain was different. But uh, some stories uh, catch the imagination of the public more than others. And in that way, I think uh, uh, the story of Arun Khetarpal is one which uh, strikes a chord in everybody's heart and of Bana Singh who again who is alive today and these two stories I think uh, have uh, been a little uh, should I say more dramatic than the others which have caused them to be remembered more. Uh, you mentioned sir you know that what kind of people were these, the ones who won these awards, whether they were ordinary or extraordinary. So I would like to frame it in a slightly different way that if, for example, suppose in a, in a unit, if one person has uh, performed an outstanding act and won a gallantry award, how would you compare him with the rest of the people of the battalion or how would he stand out or are there any other factors which you feel uh, go towards uh, highlighting certain acts? See, uh, you've been to the NDA and so have I. And one of the things we learned there is that uh, <laughs> cooperation is the principle of war. And cooperation means that when we go into battle, we are not fighting as individuals. We are fighting as a team. My life depends upon somebody else who is backing me up or is ahead of me and similarly the others. Now the thing is that, as you rightly said, one of the factors that is responsible for a person getting an award is that his act has to be seen by somebody else, talked about, reported, and then the commanding officer decides as to who of the team deserves to be given an award. So this, in a way, is what ultimately decides as to who gets the medal. But the actual responsibility is the whole team. There are many soldiers who do exceedingly well in battle, but who don't get an award. There are many soldiers who deserve an award, but are blown to bits, and nobody even knows who they are. And therefore, I feel very strongly that the country needs to honor these people by honoring them as the unknown soldier. 
The unknown soldier's grave lies in Westminster Abbey in Great Britain, and the Queen goes there every year to honor the unknown soldier whose grave is on the floor of Westminster Abbey. But nobody can walk over his grave, although they can walk over the graves of other kings and queens, because along around this grave, every day fresh flowers are placed. And there is a soldier with a rifle who's looking at looking out to this place of honor. In Arlington in America, in the War Cemetery, again, there is a huge memorial to the unknown soldier. In Australia, at 11 o'clock, 11 minutes past 11, on the 11th day of the month, or the 11th day of the year, the sun beam shines on the statue of the unknown soldier. Similarly, the unknown soldier is honored in Italy, in New Zealand, in Bangladesh, in Sri Lanka, but we don't honor the unknown soldier in India. And my take is that between India Gate and the newly instituted war memorial, there is a canopy. And that canopy or chhatri is vacant because the statue of King George V has been removed. There is no better place than that canopy to honor the unknown soldier by putting his statue there. Of course, the, the bureaucrat will have all things to say because he wants somebody else to be put there. But I feel that as far as the country is concerned, the unknown soldier needs to be honored and that is the rightful place for him. So, so as someone who uh, has done a little bit of research on military history myself, especially tales of personal uh, valor, I found a very big challenge in, you know, in the fact that uh, as a habit, we are not in the practice of recording history very well, sir. Uh, do you also, did you also feel this challenge learning more about the personal details of the individuals or going into the background stories? Could you tell us a little about the challenges that you faced sir, in your research on these? You're very right, Rohit. Unfortunately, India does not have a sense of history. We have fought five wars since independence. There are so many stories to be told, and yet they are not told. When I approach published to, to say that there are many stories and we need to tell them, they tell me there is no market for war stories. So that is one point. The other is that, yes, we do not record history. Whereas in World War I and World War II and all the wars fought by the European countries, People go into battle with cameras and, and uh, recording machines, etc. But in India, we seem to be afraid of our own shadow. You cannot talk about it. You cannot photograph it. You cannot do anything. So writing about the past, writing history is extremely difficult because we, we seem to be under the shadow of a false sense of security. This needs to go. We need to know what happened, why it happened, what were the lessons learned, what is the message of each story, and so that future generations can be inspired and motivated to do even better. But for that, we need to record history in every form of medium better than we are doing at present. The 71 war, India did a great thing by allowing foreign war correspondents to accompany our troops into battle. And the, the exposure we got gave in, put India way above Pakistan. So it is important that we record history properly so that it can, proper stories can be told to motivate future generations. You're right. Absolutely right. Sir. While, sir, while what you've said is true about the, you know, the official mechanism of recording history, would you also uh, suggest uh, what do individuals do should, like you mentioned about First World War and Second World War, we come across a lot of personal memoirs of soldiers, of officers, uh, which brings in another perspective, a closer perspective to what went on. But unfortunately, we, with very few exceptions, we don't find such personal accounts and memoirs in, of all the Indian wars. Sir. So what is your take on this? Sir? Rohit, you're very right. We have a problem here. Right from the time I was in the academy till the time I retired, we have been told 
don't blow your own trumpet don't beat your own drum and therefore this reticence has resulted in the man in the street not knowing anything about the armed forces and not knowing about these stories of courage and gallantry etc when i was uh, commanding the battalion in a place called trivandrum uh, we had gone for a picnic uh, the long story i cut it short a 12 year boy was drowning i had to take off my leg and be launched into the sea by two people and i brought him back there were many journalists there who wanted the story i told them there is no story now looking back in retrospect i think i did something wrong if there was a story not only would uh, well the person who did the job be sort of uh, lauded but the army would have got a better name people would know that there are people in the armed forces who go beyond the line of duty to do things which are extraordinary but that didn't happen and then kushwan singh kushwan singh met me at a party and he said i want to write your story and i said uh, there is no story so it is this reticence which we have been brought up on which also doesn't allow or doesn't encourage us to write no soldier speaks about himself no soldier writes about himself it is time that this changed you are absolutely right these stories need to be told as i said before to motivate future generations you are absolutely right sir this brings me to the right point to ask you to for the benefit of our viewers today to very briefly share with us your own story because this is also one of personally it is one of the most inspiring stories that i have heard and i'm sure very few people since i don't think you have written about it much uh, about your own experiences and you talked about how you lost your leg and uh, so would you like to share that with us sir and our viewers today uh, rohit is like this 7 uh, years ago uh, mr pramod kapoor and priya his daughter asked me to write my own story but with this legacy of the past i said uh, no there's no story but now i've had a rethink and i think i should at least set an example to others by writing my own story so that others can write their own stories also with regard to my story being so inspiring let me uh, confess to you that i did much more in 65 than i did in 71 and in 71 people sort of uh, give me a lot of uh, honor and praise for cutting off my own leg but what i want to say is that i feel that anybody in my place would have done the same thing there was no option i knew that the leg could not be saved and therefore there was no point in keeping it and we were behind enemy lines the medical facilities had been destroyed there was no morphia there was no pethidrin there was nothing to cut the leg off but being in the gorkhas we have a knife called the kukri so when the i when the doctor came i said go and find something to cut this off he took about half an hour to 45 minutes and he didn't come back so i told my batman i said balba where is my kukri so he said here it is sir i said cut it off he said sir please wait for the doctor it's not i don't think i should cut it off i said all right give it to me and i cut off my leg i told him go very so when the doctor came back he said what have you done i said doctor please doc no lectures just wrap it tie it up and be done with it but he said that it's it, a lot of muck has gone in there's a lot of splinters you need to have medical treatment so at that time uh, the uh, surrender was taking place in dhaka there was no way no helicopter was available to me and the uh, pakistanis who had surrendered who heard about this said that they would they offered to operate on me so i told my commanding officer sir no thank you i don't trust them he said uh, now don't be foolish so i said sir two conditions he said you are no situation to lay down any condition i said two requests he said what are they i said sir i'll not take pakistani blood he said i don't be a fool i said sir i'm prepared to die a fool then live with pakistani blood 
He said, okay, what's the next request? I said, sir, whatever they operate on me, I want you to be there because I don't want them to cut off my good leg. So I don't know. Until today, I never asked him whether he was there or not. But I just think I would like to repeat that uh, I think any soldier in my place would have done the same thing. I, I think that's just your humility, sir. I, I reiterate that I think it is one of the most inspiring stories that I personally have uh, heard, sir. And, thank you. Uh, I really want to thank you for sharing this today and I look forward to your book also where uh, maybe we can hear about it in more detail, sir. Uh, any parting words that you have for our audience, for the listeners and the viewers, sir? Yeah, you know what's happening on the border these days? And uh, there's a lot that I can say about it, but I won't. I'll only repeat what uh, Desmond Haid, Mahavish Chakra of Dograi, told me when he was my platoon commander in IMA. He said, battles are won or lost in the mind before they are won or lost on the ground. And therefore, we need to have a strategy to face the Chinese in a manner where we concentrate on their weaknesses, make our strengths their weakness and their weakness our strength. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It's been a lovely, lovely experience talking to you and I hope to uh, interact offline also with you subsequently and learn more about... Uh, thank you, Rohit. God bless you. Take care. Thank you, sir. So, thank you viewers for joining us this evening. Uh, I'll request you, please follow Roly Books on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Please like, subscribe and also the notification icon. Thank you.